Sansa here, safe and sound on a side street in Alamosa, Colorado. I just got the RV towed from where it was in El Prado, New Mexico. And I am I'm in a situation where I have under a thousand but more than five hundred. I appreciate some of the advice that's come in since the last video. The fact of the matter is, folks, if you're an amateur and you don't know what you're doing, do not attempt to rebuild a transmission. These are uh, particular things, I understand that, but I also know that it's to my benefit that the TH400 model transmission is a fairly common one. So hopefully, in a reasonable amount of time, I'll be able to find someone to help me at a reasonable price, a fair price. Can't do 50 an hour. Get, can we talk about something a little bit less? But not exactly $10 an hour. You know, something that I can afford, so it's going to take me some time it's going to take me some time to get the RV back on the road. This is somewhat of a blow to me psychologically because that money could have gone towards a down payment on a plot of property. Now, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is some recent drama that I encountered in the Taos, New Mexico area that I have not spoken about on my YouTube channel. Now, I have been staying at a, a certain property in Taos, New Mexico and a prominent activist who was out of town at the moment, who is uh, involved in uh, what seems to be some decent activities from what I've uh, looked up. However, this was a situation of a particular person watching the property for the owner. And yes, he invited me down there. I messaged him actually on Facebook seeing if he knew of some decent places to park. Now, I didn't know this guy very well. We were Facebook friends for a couple of years, did him a favor back in 2013, when I cleaned up his mess that he left at someone's property that he was house-sitting. And I think that was probably the last time I saw him. So I go to Taos from where I was staying on the 7th of March, and he's living in a school bus with his family. And things get weirder after a few days. Now, first of all, I prefer most of the time to spend time alone and work on stuff on my computer. I felt a sense of resentment growing this person that I wasn't being like his buddy. Because it was about a week later that this person started getting, and I, when I mean physical, I don't mean coming up, punching and pushing, but yelling at me, calling me names, and getting up in the close space, like face-to-face, -face, multiple times. Now, this isn't an intimidating person, and I'm not trying to be mean to him. I don't know what he's thinking, trying to provoke someone to doing something violent. Uh, but this person is a mooch in his own right. Hey, Alex, can I get a little of this? You know, we're talking about green. Maybe I had some extra green laying around, which I did share with him. And... He's been busy working on other cars, turning the property into a mechanic shop. And I had an issue happen with my RV after arriving by a few days. The transmission slipped. And I will say that there is a certain amount of bad luck that certain people have experienced in Taos or certain areas. You know, where it's like in that area, three years ago, my ignition stopped working on the Honda that I was driving at the time. It happened within blocks of where that took place. And I've also seen a certain amount of energy interference in certain places that I've gone. Some people have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, but I've seen some people turn on me in some pretty nasty ways. Not quite like this. Not for some time. The accusations, you're a jerk, you're a jerk. This person wanted my energy wanted my time, wanted something, there was some sort of resentment this person was holding. As if my actual presence on the property was causing him to have a mental health crisis in his dreams or something. I have no idea what the deal is. But the dude got meaner and meaner and meaner. So I had an issue with my RV, had it towed back to the property. And uh, we talked about changing the oil at some point. And... He got really angry that I wasn't, one expression that I can use, eating out of his hand. 
begging him for help. You know, another resident that I was talking to advised me to stay calm, meet the owner. He said a lot of positive things about the owner. Other things were said that the property was under massive government surveillance because of the um, the years of activism, feeding the homeless, and other things that the owner of the property was involved in. At least that's what I was told. And did a little Googling, looked at his Wikipedia page, and I'm thinking, this sounds like, a, like an interesting individual. Why would he leave his property to individuals that think that it's okay to get up in someone's face and yell at him and scream at him and create this whole drama. And then I get blamed. Well, I'm the new guy. I didn't know the owner. This particular guy has done some things that have benefited the owner, like rebuilding his website and building some other websites. And so I'm not saying he has no skills. But what I am saying is that he's a psychopath, sociopath. And whether I wasn't giving him enough attention, wasn't smoking enough of his spliffs, as he describes it, where you mix the tobacco and the weed. You know, I was spending time doing my own things. I was bringing back AlexAnsory.tv, which I have. I worked on that for three days straight. And I could almost feel my own, this guy's mad at me that I'm not hanging out with him. And it just keeps building and building and building. One guy came by one day, friend of the owner, said that it was $100 a month to park there. I have no problem with that. For the right place, I'll pay 200 a month so I can stop driving. But the owner gets that money, not this individual. So I never knew the owner. All I knew was his reputation as a very famous activist on the internet, feeding the homeless, yelling about government surveillance. I'm a victim, government surveillance, I'm a victim only to see this individual side with Kyle when I contacted him on Facebook and let him know about the situation. For example, today. After several blow-ups, okay, where this person is throwing a tissy fit because I'm either not giving him enough stuff, not giving him enough money, gave him $20 to help me change the transmission fluid, took us about a half hour to an hour. Okay. In the meantime, now that I know that is not the problem, I have been looking for a replacement transmission for the last few days and some help putting it in. I could feel this guy's anger towards me for not depending on him for help, which is what he wanted. Okay? He was complaining about his computer not working, complaining about other things, and he's like, okay, I got to make some money. Well, it, it's how you talk to people. So he sits down and tries to explain to me, maybe I shouldn't get the transmission. Maybe I should just pay him $400 to have him show me how to rebuild the transmission. First of all, I don't trust this person's claim to be an expert at all these different things. He may or may not be able to do the job, but the fact of the matter is I have a right to hire the person that I want to work on the RV. Who knows? I could end up spending $800. Right now, I have under 1000 but more than 500 And I am looking for someone in the Southern Colorado area, the Alamosa area where I am now, that can help me in a timely manner get this taken care of. But I am not going to hire someone who's going to physically get up in my face. And what this story, a big part of this story, are those people around this individual that think his behavior is okay. Oh, who am I? I don't own the property. I'm just a guest. He invited me. What kind of thinking is this? The place is listed on couch surfers. How is it that people randomly showing up through couch surfers are treated with more respect and dignity than I? Is it because I stuck around for a few weeks? Is it because I wanted to meet the owner? You know, when I spoke to David, the friend of the owner, I had no problem with the idea of paying 25 a week, 100 a month. But what am I supposed to do? Just fork over money to someone that's screaming at me? Today I pulled out the camera when he was chastising me, basically talking to me like I'm an idiot because I'm not a mechanic, like an expert mechanic like him. And some mechanics get into this psycho, I know everything and you know nothing and you're an asshole 
for not relying on me and looking to me. That's really why I was an asshole to him, a jerk. I didn't have faith in this particular individual. And I'm going into other means because of the way that he attacked me verbally. I mean, how do you attack someone verbally and think that it's fair or sane to extort someone and then say, get off the property then, get off, get off now. You have the day to get off. I'm calling all my friends and we're going to make sure you're out of here before the day is out. I mean, that's what he's saying to me in response to me saying, I'm not, it's how you're talking to me, man. This little guy with his own family, wife, girlfriend, and, and off the radar, free range child who has lived a, a life free of, free of some of the harmful things that other kids experience. You know, they really package themselves and present themselves to be an honorable off the grid couple and family. And multiple times this person would come at me while his girlfriend is still inside and child. You know, and there were situations where he wanted to talk to me inside the RV and be confrontational. And I told him, no, you're going to leave the RV and we're going to talk outside. You're not going to trap me into these private conversations. I mean, I don't know what kind of thinking leads to that type of self-destructive behavior because... Try to do that in the streets where someone doesn't have any morality, where someone doesn't believe in karma. What goes around goes around. Try that shit with someone else and see if they responded in the controlled way that I did. So he goes for my camera today. And this is like the, 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 the last in a series of confrontations that this guy is having with me. I'm the manager of this property. I don't like you. Get out of here. Dick, not going to hire me to do the transmission? Fuck you. All right, so I get out the camera. I've got to document this. And I should have documented more, covertly. So you could have heard what he said. So he comes at me and goes for the camera. And instead of fight the guy, I'm trying to get the camera back. And we're only wrestling back and forth for like five minutes. It's literally like, dude, give me the camera. It's not, I'm going to put you in a headlock. It's not, I'm going to put your leg in something and, and break it. He's saying I broke his leg. He's saying I broke his leg. I actually let go of him. And all the camera footage shows is just some wild shots up in the air. It'll be uploaded up in the raw. And you also hear me say to someone else, don't leave me. And that was someone that I wanted to be a witness. Someone that I have been uh, having a, for some very interesting conscious conversations with Whenever there was this confrontation, he would grab his bike and just take off. He is not in a position to side with me because he could get booted off the property as well. Oh, you're Alex's friend. He's been on the property off and on for years. And he was the one that said that I and the founder of this organization, the founder of the, uh, the owner of the uh, property, he said we would get along. He said we would appreciate each other's passion for activism. And that Kyle did not own the show. He was creating a false reality that he was the manager and he ran the show. Well, apparently that wasn't completely truthful. Kyle has been anointed, this individual, uh, with this management title. Because he was clearly allowed to do what he did. And because he did some good things for the owner, the owner has a different understanding of what happened. And I'm also thinking about this owner and all this stuff. You know, I'm supposed to think he's a victim with all this police harassment. I don't know anything about this owner and how he handles his personal affairs. Apparently, we were friends on Facebook. I must have added him. Well, he's now blocked. Okay, I contacted him and tagged him and said, this is what happened. And he said, Kyle's a nice young man. You didn't want to pay Kyle the money for the transmission work. You don't want to pay $100 a month to park here. What kind of bullshit is that to say to someone you haven't talked to yet? The plan was I was going to meet the owner when he arrived. I didn't know we had this Lord of the Flies thing going on with people coming and going, oh, you're in, you're in charge, you're in charge, and then allow a system where someone can flip out and get in someone's face. Another person chimed in. <clears throat> I believe his name was Adam, and he said, well, didn't Kyle invite you? I, I, the psychology is ingrained in some humans. Okay, you're down here in the hierarchy. You don't know, Keith. 
You know, you did, did. You were invited here, excuse me, by Kyle. Therefore, Kyle has some sort of right to abuse me? I mean, that's totally asinine. That is insane. I am contemplating writing an article about this. And I have, um, <clears throat> I have a video of me discussing the warning signs that I was seeing from Kyle. I recorded this video about uh, four days ago, five days ago. I trusted my intuition. Something told me to record everything that happened, but not to upload it yet. And so there's a lot of different footage that I have. Again, he's claiming that I broke his leg. I let him up and he gave me back the camera after a minute of asking, give me back the camera. Kyle, give me back. Do not break my camera. He did threaten to break the camera. So usually we expect this behavior from police. You know, the police harassing the founder of this organization. Oh, the poor victim of police surveillance. Hey man, I'm the first guy to want to interview you. And I'm saying that like metaphorically, not literally. First guy in line, I want to interview you, get to know you and hear your story as to what's going on. What's wrong with feeding the homeless once a week and preparing food without a license? I mean, that's a story worth covering. But again, if you don't really know someone, you can be aware of someone's online persona as some sort of activist guru. Maybe they have another agenda for they, why they want to be seen as a humanitarian. But anyone in any organization that allows that type of behavior to turn around and take sides because one person made a website for you, instead of realizing the dysfunction that you are allowing on your own property, that neighbors are seeing. Multiple neighbors have already seen Kyle screaming at me. Neighbors of this man's residence. That was embarrassing. That was an embarrassing situation. I'd like to get to know the neighbors. You know, in kind of a, an urban slash rural environment where maybe we can work together or just wave once in a while and not be like a negative thing when we see each other. But I'll tell you what, the neighbor next to that place witnessed Kyle a few days ago screaming at me and getting in my face. The neighbors have seen Kyle's behavior. The neighbors didn't see me getting in Kyle's face. And someone can look at me, I work out, they can look at Kyle, they can look at my, you know, bag hitting uh, video. I believe in martial arts training, as I explained to, um, to one of the uh, associates of the owner, as we talked for an hour, and he was okay with me recording that conversation. Okay, just because I train doesn't make me a violent person. I can see somebody go, oh yeah, that guy likes to fight. No, I don't like to fight. No, I don't like conflict. No, I don't get up in anybody's face and try to pull some power trip. And that's the issue that you have with a lot of intentional communities. You have really social engineers that want a fan club. They want people's energy to feed on. Even some of the woofers, and I remember this guy correcting me when I called it wolfing. It's like it's woofing, like I'm an idiot. Now, I don't know why Kyle had such an investment in talking down to me over the course of my whole time there. Um, I don't know if it has anything to do with my YouTube channel. I don't know what it does. Maybe my, my views, my, my politics, my spiritual thoughts. You know, the first night I was there, he was talking about how he felt gang stalked by the government. And I shared my perspective that you guys are already familiar with. A lot of people think they're being gang stalked or actually being targeted in another way. And it's not a good sign. When someone's screaming that they're being gang stalked and everywhere they go, they're being harassed. Now it's clear that this guy has attracted a karmic trail. Now someone else could say, well, it's your karma for the transmission going out. <clears throat> Again, there, there were some issues with the transmission that I was not aware of that were never checked out. I never knew that there were supposed to be magnetics in the pan, magnets, to pull in the magnetic particles to prevent the transmission from being clogged. So, okay, I never had the transmission checked out. Don't attack me and call me an idiot. Don't call me a jerk. And then literally get physical because I'm not going to pay you $400 cash for a transmission rebuild. So I have a lot of footage. I have a lot of commentary. 
I'll be editing some of the stuff together. And we'll have a tape. It's probably an hour, hour and a half. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this drama. But I have been talking about the archonic influence over human relationships. And it's not just about male and female relationships or women in today's society. However, isn't it interesting this guy is married and with someone that actually believes his behavior is acceptable. That this is how you treat other men. And there were all these other women that started appearing that were friends of Kyle. Again, people that I have never met, but Kyle's already smoked weed with, Kyle's already associated with, and other people associated with the organization. And they're not coming over really talking to me to get to know me. There's one person, there's, I'm just here to smile. I'm the guy that smiles. And, um, you know, I'm just here to make sure you're safe. And so, again, there was me trying to explain to him, listen, your organization condones violence. What don't you understand about that? In addition, your organization supports extortion. Okay, if I'm in a situation where my transmission shot, you don't beat the guy up. Maybe people work together to find a common solution. And someone could get a job doing something if they present themselves in a certain way. You don't walk in anywhere and try to get a job and insult the person that's going to employ you. And if a mechanic is fucking flipping out on you before you even give him the money, one person could say that person deserves to get screwed if they're going to give that person hundreds of dollars. I know it's a good deal to have a rebuild. I have no problem spending four or five hundred for the rebuild if it's done right. Screaming at someone and calling them names is not going to get someone a job. And so this organization and its owner condone extortion, condone other things potentially going on the property when the owner isn't there. condoning verbal abuse and condoning aggressive behavior. So I want to get all this off my chest now that I'm parked at a safe place in Alamosa. I have some issues with my solar that I have to work out. It's a time for prayer. If anyone would like to help me out in this situation, whatever comes to mind, feel free to do so. If you're in the Southern Colorado, Northern New Mexico area, Alamosa area, and you're willing to work with me on this project, this repair, I would appreciate that. That's all for now. My email is also down below. We'll see you in the next video. Facebook trying to help it's you. It's how you I've talk offered, to me. I've offered to rebuild It's your... how okay, you talk recording. to me. Keep recording. You're pressuring me to give you the job um, to fix my I transmission. I don't want your job. I want you out of here. Leave. And now you're telling I'm me to get out I because I won't give you, you the job. Hey, I don't want he's kicking job. me out of I here because I won't give him the job. I'm not starting anything, man. This is now for my Alex, protection. You are leaving. This today. is for today my... You are do not assault me. I'm not assating you. Do not assault me. You are not welcome here anymore, and a lot of people have my back on it. Have fun. Today, and I will definitely have that done. Right? So here's the deal. Hey, guess what? I told you. I'm managing the property. Besk isn't managing the property. I'm here on Keith's behalf, and all the people. You're physically aggressive, too. You literally get up in my face. Dude, You're throwing a fit you. because I won't hire you. I'm not hiring you to Dude, fix I this. Be hired. I told you you I'm not hiring yourself. you to fix my transmission because how you're talking Get to me. Get the fuck out of I here. I told you. I will take your camera. Dude, do not. Dude. Beck, do not leave. Do not break my camera. Beck, do not leave me. Please, dude. You cannot. Dude, Alex, you're starting a fight. You're like starting a camera. fight. Then stop dude, it. Beck, I need your help. Please, dude. You have to. I'm trying to get my camera. Just let go of the camera. No, girl. you're fucking starting like, to fight. My, that's my only camera, man. Stop it's it. Only... Get off me now or I will bash it. Let go of my camera, dude. please. All right? You Let's fucking sprained my ankle. Get off me. Please let go of my only... No. Get off me. Let go of my only you're camera. You're instigating a fight. Back and you sprained my ankle. Dude, you took my camera. You Give me sprained my, my ankle. Get the fuck so. off me. Why, why can't we even be friends? Dude, I've because offered my go, help. You almost broke the camera back. That's not something. I have offered my help. I never touched help. you. 
to you. And you are being such an asshole to me. Back, I need help getting my camera now. I will dude. give you your camera Just, back. All right. I will. I'm to work that out. I will. I don't know what to do. I'm not going to break your camera. I'm trying to talk to you. Dude, I don't want to fight with you. I, I didn't try to hurt your ankle. Why dude. are you instigating a fight? You did. Is that still recording? I, yeah, probably. Okay. I didn't turn it off. You took that camera out of my hands, man. You're that, right. You're instigating a fight. You pull, Just I by grabbing a camera, camera for my protection. For your protection. Yeah, you're walking towards me. Okay, dude. And that camera SD card has the evidence of that. I didn't attack you. I didn't. I've been trying you to work right with you. I've been. The camera out of my how hands. nice have I been to you, Alex? Recommending no, advice man. to you. Recommending the cheapest the, rebuild the deal. Would already be done, and we would be involved in working on this if you're not attacking me like that. Oh, man.